Today, what I want to talk about is document cameras. So one of the things that I recently learned is that when you have a trade name that occupies kind of an entire product category, it's called a proprietary eponym, kind of like Kleenex and tissue. Uh, let me know if you have what your favorite ones are. We've been kind of playing around with a whole bunch of them here at the office, Kevin and Laurel and I. Uh, we have some of our favorites. Let me hear about some of your favorites in the comments below. But Elmo is the trade name, Document Camera is the product type. They both do the same thing. It's essentially a web camera here on a stick that then points down and whatever you put underneath that document camera is what the jurors are gonna see on their screen. And what I've done is I've connected this with a cable to that monitor with a couple of intermediary steps, but essentially this is connected to that monitor and let's pretend that's what the jurors are looking at. And so what you have is for the document camera, you can have something, let's say this, like jury instructions. This particular document camera has a little preview window that I can see what's going on here so that I don't have to turn my back to see what's going on on the jury screen, but it is always helpful to make sure you take a look at what the jurors are looking at as well. And so I'll set that there and I can zoom in and I could zoom out depending on how I want to use it. The temptation for a lot of people is to just say, I want to show this entire paper. So they do that and they zoom all the way out. The problem is if you zoom all the way out, yes, you can see the entire paper, but you're not using all the real estate of the screen and no one can really read that anyway. So you've kind of won the battle, but lost the war. What I typically do when I set up a document camera, when I turn it on in the morning, I will zoom it in to a width where there's no margins left. So when you put the paper in there, all of you see is text. And so you've maximized the space on this document camera and on these monitors. And so now I can only see a couple of paragraphs at a time, but it's nice and big everyone can read what's going on on the screen. So that's how I typically use a document camera. Other things that most document cameras have are a light that's over here. And this light in this sitting, setting right here in my office on this set, it's really well lit. So there's plenty of light on here. This light isn't all that important. But in a courtroom where the lighting is gonna be irregular and not really designed for something like this, for image capture or image presentation, Adjusting this light is gonna be pretty important in terms of is the image bright enough to be projected properly onto the screen. So that's something that you wanna to toy around with and adjust. So you can adjust the light and the position of it. You can turn it on or off, whatever you need to do. So when you're done with the document, you can always just take it off. I particularly like this document camera because it has a black background. So that way when I take the document off, it just looks like I have a blank clean screen behind me and I'm not projecting like a really bright, if this were white, for example, everyone would be looking at a really bright white screen. And if you walk in front of the projector, if it's a projector projecting to a screen, that's gonna blind you. That's gonna be painful every time you do that. So I do prefer the ones with the black background on it. There are some other brands out there. Wolf Vision makes some really beautiful document cameras. They all have white backgrounds. And I think that there is a optics reason for that. Uh, but I do prefer the black backgrounds just because a lot of the time, there isn't a document under the document camera when you're working. So then you don't have to worry about, well, do I have to hit a button on the projector to turn it off or to blank it or something like that? And then when I want to use the document camera, do I have to remember to unblank it? Don't worry about any of that. Just put the document on, take the document off and no distraction once you're done with it there. The other main things that I want to talk about in terms of using this document camera or interfacing with a vendor when you're communicating with them in terms of ordering a document camera is there's a couple of ways, and we'll look at some of the ports on the back here, but on this one here, there's a little trap door that opens up where you could see where you plug it in for power, but also there are inputs and outputs available, and the ones that are available on your particular document camera or the one that the vendor has may vary, but in general, there's a way to connect a computer to this and a way to connect this to a projector. This device by itself is not enough to present evidence in a courtroom. This device only has a camera on it that captures whatever's underneath it. You need to connect it to something else that can show whatever this capture, camera is capturing to an audience. And in this case, I've connected it with a VGA cable to this monitor over here. And in courtroom, you might use uh, VGA or DVI or HDMI or whatever is in that courtroom to connect to a projection system or to a system that has 
multiple monitors. And we'll talk about how you can do some of that stuff in subsequent videos. So hit the subscribe button if you wanna come along and get notifications for when those videos hit. So that's something to keep in mind. There's outputs in terms of what does this camera image go out to. There's also inputs. And the way that that works is a lot of times people wanna connect a laptop and a document camera or an Elmo to a projection system. And older projectors used to only have one thing you could connect to at a time. So rather than having to unplug when you wanted to use the document camera and then plug into a laptop when you wanna use PowerPoint and then back again, you can plug in both things at the same time. And there's buttons on here that switch. There's a document camera button and then there's a laptop button that you can switch back and forth in terms of which signal is going to then go to the jury monitor, right? And so that's something that I don't really ever use because we connect all of our stuff to a switch. Think of it like the panel at the back of your TV. Everything could be kind of connected independently at the same time. So I don't need this, but if you're in a pinch and you don't wanna bring a lot of equipment and you need to have a laptop and a document camera, you can kind of connect both of them at the same time through the document camera and the inputs that it has there. So that's something that's available as an option. You don't have to use it that way, but you can. The other thing that's available is a lot of document cameras have an ability to put an SD card inside the document camera. And then if you hit that button, it takes a screenshot of whatever is being displayed, whether it's jury instructions or a physical object, like a hand or uh, a surgical screw, or let's say it's a piece of forensic evidence that you don't necessarily want jurors to handle with their hands, but you want them to see it. That's something that can be put underneath there. And you can hit that button to take a screenshot and it'll get saved to uh, an SD card in here. So that's something that's also available as an option. You can toggle the lights on and off as you need to. And that's pretty much what this document camera does. Think of it as a camera on a stick. What we're looking at here is the camera. It's on a stick. You could zoom in and you can zoom out. The other thing to remember is that, to re reiterate that point that this doesn't have a projection system built into it. It's just the capture device. You have to connect it. So if you are going to rent just an Elmo or just a document camera from a vendor, make sure that either you're requesting or they're gonna be including a way of connecting it to the projector or maybe you're renting one for an arbitration or a deposition of connecting that with a video cable to whatever you want people to see, whether it's a monitor or a projection screen, whatever it is, they need to be able to see it. So you need to have a way of connecting this device to a screen. So you need to know what the screen can take in and you need to know what kind of cables this can connect to. The other thing that you always wanna keep in mind when you're renting single pieces of equipment is power. You need to plug this in. This thing doesn't run on batteries. And so if you wanna be able to put this in a convenient place for you and there isn't outlets where you are, you wanna make sure you're bringing a power strip. I usually bring two and then at least an extension cord. So that way, if the outlet is on the wall far away from you, you can still plug in, have plenty of cabling. So that way you're not creating trip hazards. You can tuck it neatly out of the way, plug in and have electricity to this device. So you have to think about power and video whenever you're dealing with these types of devices. That's a pretty quick rundown on document cameras, but I think it's pretty thorough. There are other settings that you can tinker with, brightness, contrast, the autofocus settings. A lot of those things you don't really need to tinker with. If you have any other questions about document cameras, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'd love to talk to you guys more down there. This is gonna be a series of different devices that we typically bring when we set up a courtroom or that attorneys may interface with when they go to trial or arbitration. So stay tuned for more videos, hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so that way you can know when the next videos hit. Thanks so much for watching this video and for making it all the way to the end. And I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.